Hello everybody, welcome back to Dawn of Man HP. We're going to be getting into the winter soon, but I wanted to explain a bit of a bug that I ran into that delayed things just a hinge here. You can see we've got the two skins, we've just recently brought back the second one and they're starting to dry that we got from the boar. But initially, I had the one person bringing them back at once. And they put them on there, and it started one drying, and the second one wouldn't start until after the second, the first one had dried completely. And that leads, of course, to it decaying further, but worse than that, just the time, we need these as quickly as possible, we can't afford to wait. I'm not sure what was going on there. So I ended up doing the kill again. The boar ran further away, we eventually got it, lost some time, but I sent two different people over there, one grabbed each of the skins, so they weren't both getting unloaded at the same time, and that was able to get things going a little bit better. And then the cave lions came back over here and started to uh, kill some mouflon, but then something really interesting happened. They decided to go down to the lake here and take a drink, leaving a fresh kill. And normally if they kill something, they're going to eat all of it or they're going to leave it mangled with one piece of meat left in. But this one also had a skin. So I sent Varen Call over here to work on butchering it and trying to, you know, get it before they're done drinking and everything. You can see we've got some more of the mouflon right down here. And we're butchering away. And then they start get startled. Why is that? Well, it's because the cave lions are back. And unfortunately, we just, as much as we'd like to, we do not have time to stick around and discuss this in committee. And we're going to have to give up on that. So double-clicking, right mouse, of course, will have him run. He's going to run away. You go chase the mouflon. You can see, yeah, that one's not going to have a nice day. But meanwhile, we just need to get the heck out of here. And then eventually what happened was they got tired of all that and they came up on here and they, you know, went after this corpse. So we didn't actually get anything out of it. On the other hand, we also survived without getting anybody killed. And they were distracted enough by the mouflon. So it was a, one of those very tense, we almost gained a nice little cheap, you know, stolen kill from the cave lions. And then we almost got eaten, but neither one of those things actually happened. Well, our survival is definitely sort of riding the edge here, but we're bringing this over to start the crafter. We finally got the skin ready for that. There's another one that's being finished on the dryer. Leaves are off the trees because winter has started. Let's take a look at this fine structure. Now everybody's in. Arian, Ahmad, Varen call, and you can see in the background we have a dog for the first time as we get this lovely framework going up on our crafter. And now the skin is in place. Poles for supporting the front of it here. And now here's where things get a little bit weird. You see, we've got these logs that we haven't gotten anything that big. I mean, you can see the difference in the size between them and the sticks. We don't have any of that required to build this. We just have the sticks and the dry skins. And I think this is one of those things where they wanted the model to look cool, and it does. You know, you need to sit on these logs to work and so on and so forth. You've got this shaded area underneath the skin. I like the model of the crafter. But it doesn't match with the actual materials you need. These are sort of like hollowed out logs or maybe even small tree trunks there that you've got going on. Here's some bones. We didn't have to put any bones into this either. So that disconnect just annoys me because it doesn't match up the model and the equipment that you had to build it. Which isn't the case with the other stuff we've seen so far. Okay, so the crafter is finished. Now this we can build by face. Butchering, harvesting, and fighting again. Wooden spear. We can build harpoons for fishing. We don't have any fishing tools yet. And we can build clothes. Clothes is the most important thing. We're leaving this on. You can see that you know line moving around it. That indicates that it's on continuous production up to the current resource limit. And these skins outfits, you get two of them out of one dry skin, two stars for warmth, and one for style. We don't care about style. We care about not freezing to death. Which, by the way, we can be thankful that the cave lions moved off this hill, or that hill it was, and over this way and down the river. Because if they were threatening us, then we'd have a choice. We could freeze to death, 
evacuate camp, or we could stick around and probably get munched on. So there's a little bit of luck involved in even surviving here. We've brought over another skin to work on, but then he's not going to work on it. Why is he not going to work on it? Because he's going to the tent. Because he's cold. <sighs> we'll get somebody to work on this eventually. But on those resource limits, one thing to keep in mind here, I'm going to bump this down to 50% because I want half of them to have a fishing tool, half of them to have a knife, i.e. biface, and then everybody to have a spear, or as close to that as we can get. Like if you build all those to 100%, then you'll have a significant amount of people that will have, like for example, a biface and a harpoon, and then they won't have the spear, which is best for fighting. So the fighting is the most important thing to me right now, and then the others can be butchering and fishing will not be nearly as much in demand. Then all these other types of tools that we don't have access to yet, I'm going to zero them out. And this one as well, because this is a cool weather outfit. We don't have leather yet, but we definitely want the skins to be at 100%. And then we can start building all those other tools, but most importantly right now is getting the warm clothes. And yep, okay, she's cold. She's going in there. We're going to speed this up. And basically the way the temperature works is this. If your temperature gets down to zero, and you can see none of these people are there yet. If it gets down to zero, then your health starts going down. If your health goes down to nothing then you die. So you can actually freeze to death here. Now in the tent, and here we are cooking for the first time. Take a look at that real quick. Both of them are. Okay. And while you're cooking food, your temperature will stop going down, or at least it slows the decline. But that's only while they're cooking and then they'll get up and do other things. Zoom back around to where we are. So, in the tent, with no clothes to protect you, temperature will go up very slightly. It'll go down slowly if you're out here and you have clothes to protect you. But the situation we're in now, where, you know, no clothes on the outside, yeah, temperature's going down quickly, and then now the health is going to start to go down. The thing is, I don't want to pull anybody out of the tent right now. And the reason I don't want to do that is she'll get up and go in there and try to, you know, I need her to finish this skins outfit. And it's going to take a little bit of time, but we're gradually moving forward with it. So just going to accelerate time one more spot to get this done a little bit quicker. And then we can try to start rotating people out of the tent once this is finished. Because we have no other skins. We're not going to have any more skins until the spring when the animals return. So really I've just got to get this. And if we have two people with clothes on, and then we also have the other three people in the tent, we can survive the winter without too much ill effects. There we go. Let's, uh, let's slow this down now. Because we want to get people dressed. And we want to get them into the tent. Oh, for Pete's sake. You now have you now have that going on. Okay. So let's get let's see who is doing the best in here. They're pretty even. Let's throw out Varen Call and you get in the tent. Or no, not not actually you you have you have one. You get in the tent. There you go. Now you come over here. And you pick up that. There we go. Okay, so now we cycle through people. You can see Arian's, like, health, temperature is going up quickly. And health, it will generate a little bit. So let's get you out. And let's see, where did our, yeah. There you go. You go back to the tent. And now we've got this morale issue. You know, halfway freezing to death will uh, will hurt your morale. It just will. But, you know, we're doing about as well as we can now. We're a little over halfway through the winter. Where, uh, okay, we went down to drink. That's not a threat, is it? No, it's just a woolly rhino. There's our dog. But we're moving along here. Trying to get through the winter without anybody freezing. Everybody that's outside has warm clothes, so they're not going to suffer too terribly. Everybody that doesn't have warm clothes is inside, 
so they can very gradually heal up and see some temperature rebound. And we just sort of got to wait until spring at this point and see what happens. Well, it is still winter. We are getting some tools made over here in our crafter with our two adults that actually have decent clothing. But then we've also got this trader here, and I noticed something else. It's very rare. I think it, these are remnants of the group that the cave lions chased off, which, by the way, I can't even find them. I don't even know where they've been. And everybody else is leaving us alone. So we're feeling a lot more peaceful and secure. But over here, we have some mouflon left over. And this is huge because, one, we've got another spear, so we can have two hunters. And also, they're one of the weakest and best prey animals that we can actually go after, period. So we're going to send the two hunters after them. And let's take a look at our wonderful trader who has arrived. Largal. Average commission. So there's low, average, and high. And that's just what their markup is. Like if we were to bump a trade of a bone up here, we've got a trade value of two. And let's say we trade the same thing from them, also value of two. But they're going to charge us three. So there's always a markup of some kind that the trader gets. We're going to get rid of this. I'm actually not going to do any trading because of wanting to keep the tech pacing in place. Everything you acquire feeds into your knowledge. That's just sort of going to be something I push off to late game if there's something we totally can't find anywhere on the map. And on the maps, the size that they are, be a very long time that happens, if ever. But I don't want to be in a situation where, you know, I'm just artificially ramping that up. You can actually buy tech straight out. But I'm not going to do that either. And the game pauses while you're talking to the trader, so that's always nice. But we're going to speed these up, and you can see, like, Arian's having herself a real bad day. And Varen Call getting farther and farther ahead. But uh, the Mouflon's actually coming up this way a little bit closer to us. Well, that's going to be good for us if we can get it. If it would stop. Well, you know what? Let's actually... Let's have the two of you take one of the closer ones. There we go. Well, that was fast, wasn't it? Okay. Now, I would love to hunt more of these. But we're going to have so much stuff on our plate that we're not really going to be able to do that. So you, nope, butcher it. There you go. We need to get Arian back to the tent and relaxing in there. Let's reduce this for just a bit. Because, I mean, super easy kill, three meat, two skins, and a bone. So we're going to get a couple more skins going up, and then we can use those to make more clothes, and everything should be... And it is spring. So we get the uh, Survive the Winter plus one knowledge. That happens every year. And it really helps if you get in a bind with increasing your knowledge. You're always at least going to get that plus one. And then, of course, everything's greening. Headed back here into the tents. So let's boot Arian out. Let them go ahead and rest. You're going to go over here and pick up some stuff from the kill that we had over that way. And then we look at Varenkal. Now, he's recently become an old man. He's got the two raw skins and down to the two carry slots. And this is interesting to me because what happens if you're carrying three things? And then you sort of have that happen. I mean, what, do you drop an item? That's something I want to kind of look into. And then he's going to come over here and we're going to have the same issue, I'm sure, with the skins dryer there. But whatever, you're dropping them off. We're just going to have to suffer through that. And then I want to turn on all of these to start making tools again. I think that's the best thing I can do. Notice that it's still cold. We're looking at what? Yeah, a little bit above freezing. So we've got all these people who have to get up to temperature before they can really get out and comfortably move around. We've got the three pieces of meat and the one nut, so we're doing okay food-wise. I'm going to pop over here. And, okay, over here is where our kill is. It was reasonably close to that location. Boy, are you moving slow. And, of course, it's because you're irritated. And morale is going to be a big element here because where is our... I know there's something else. Yep, there's a bone. And now where are you going? Oh, you want to go get a harpoon from the tent. All right, that's fine. So we're going to move back over here. But morale is our next thing to deal with because we have all the other needs met. We've got food, we've got water, we've got 
you know, the health is going to come back up. Temperature is going to come back up. We're going to need more clothes as well. But we can make tools here in the crafter, and in fact, we are. Joe is working on that spear, and we're going to gradually build up our stock of those. That's all going to work well. So if we build, under spiritual, we only have one thing available. There'll be more later. We have these skull poles, a structure in memory of the fallen ancestors. And of course, ancestor worship, a common thing in ancient times. They also worshiped other things, spirits, etc. But I'm going to sort of aim this roughly towards the middle, a little bit away from the hearth. The hearth is also a centerpiece of the village. So all that works pretty well. And spiritual buildings are, of course, just for morale. And a little bit of prestige as well. But the morale in the game in general is something that's really controversial, and I don't think it should be. And what has happened is some of the items make total sense to a lot of people, like eating raw meat and freezing and things like that. Others, I'm going to bump this up to high priority, have found some objections. One of them is doing difficult physical work, you know, carrying the big stones and other things that will come into later. And if you think about it, I mean, the argument sort of against it has become, well, you know, they have to do these things. Like, they have to do these things to eat and survive, so why are they getting upset about it? Because they're human beings. They have emotions. You know, we're not logical robots. If you've ever done long physical labor or... I mean, done anything that naturally irritates you for an extended period of time that's really tedious. A great sign. You know, it, everybody has a sort of psychological breaking point, and people's occur at different levels. But in terms of sort of just understanding the experience, I mean, it's easy to think of it abstractly in a game management kind of perspective. But this is a little bit more, you know, involved than that. Like, People are not just these automatons, and at a certain point, you get frustrated with something even if you know it's completely necessary. Now, the other aspect is the religious angle. And one of, oh, we got more flint. Let's set up another work area for flint real quick. And I'm in the wrong thing. There we go. Flint, move up. There's a good spot over here. Yeah, let's see. Let's go ahead and put you there. It doesn't need to be that wide, but whatever. One person gathering ten, that's fine. And by the way, flint does not decay. So we don't need to be on that anymore. But on the religious side, you know, people, like, one of the best YouTubers that I've seen do this, and they did it shortly after it was released, was really upset about it because they're a very naturalistic, scientific-minded person. And why do we have religion in the game? Like, well, that's what people did. There was polytheism and superstition, etc. And personally, I am a spiritual person. But I don't worship skull poles. I don't worship ancestors. That's not my concept of God or the afterlife or any of those things. But that's beside the point. It doesn't offend me that people are going to venerate this thing. You know, it, it's the idea that we're representing a history here. There are things that really happened. People took their, you know, inspiration and, and hope from things like that. And you can't, you know, if you're going to present this period of history and not have religious structures in it, I mean, to me, that would be absurd because it just doesn't reflect history. And I'm glad that they did it. I'm also glad about the particular representation of the skull pole, which we'll get into in just a bit. For now, though, I just want to speed this up and get this built because there's not really a whole lot else that we have available at the moment. So, are they going to dry our skins for us? Got both of them up there. That's good. It's almost done. Just got to wait for somebody to come pick it up. But if we take a look at our build menu, the various options that we have, we're pretty much full. I mean, the one spiritual, Skull Pole, we're building that. I mean, you can always build more things, but skins dryer, crafter, hearth, we have all of those. Under storage, we've got our two piles, and then there's this big, bigger storage tent. Requires quite a bit of skins. That would be more of a major investment. Okay, we don't have that yet. And then we've got tents. And we want to build more tents for people, but we're looking pretty good in terms of the basics now. 
especially after we get tools and clothes up as we're gradually working. So is anybody going to actually do anything with this? Not yet. We're cooking more food, but we have more. Okay, now you're going to get the skin. Thank you very much, Varenkal. You can see our workload is decent. It's getting a bit, or, bit on the lower side, but it, we're still holding up. We'll work on some other things once we get this. I just want to make sure we get this up right away, and we'll see why once we get it done. And we'll sort of slow down and pop in here because this isn't a particularly long project. So we've got, you know, your basic stick sticking out of the ground. We've got skulls on the branches and then there's a couple more skulls. And then we've got sort of these red stringy things hanging down from the branches. And we've got more up there and those really should be paid close attention to because there's more to them than meets the eye. But first of all, notice we're kneeling down and worshiping this thing and recovering morale. That's Arian. And a couple things practically from a game point aspect, the, you can only recover so much morale from it at once and then there's a cool down before you can worship or relax or whatever you want to call it at another spiritual building of the same type. You could like go to this one, then another type, but we don't have that. So it's going to take us a while to get good morale for all our people. They've got to do this for a while. They go away and do something else. Then they'll come back later. And only one person can use this at a time. But eventually it is enough to get a settlement of this size back up. It's just going to take a little bit of work. We want more housing capacity, but on the subject here of these things hanging off of it, it seems clear to me that this is a representation of ochre. And ochre is basically the generic name for a class of iron-rich rocks that they used for pigmentation. Some of them were yellowish. Most of them were reddish in color. And they were used for all kinds of things. There's a big debate still going on about what were they used for first and translating to other things and whatever. Were they more ceremonial or were they more practical? But we believe they were used for things like sunscreen, you know, so people could travel longer distances without sunburn injuries, particularly in hotter climates. For adhesives, like when you're trying to stick, you know, some sort of sharpened, you know, arrow or whatever on the, onto the tip of a spear. We've found them at burial sites. We think they were used for ceremonial painting, uh, definitely for identification. There are people who still use them for that purpose around the world. It's a bright color, stacks out against most backgrounds. So different markings that you could smear on yourself would allow for longer distance recognition. And this was so prevalent that paleoanthropologists will tell you there are still languages that have only two words for colors. A word for red and a word for not red. And you don't see that with other colors. You don't see it with blue, you don't see it with green, etc. So this red ochre pigmentation was very central to society in various aspects. And so I think this is a really good representation of just sort of a central structure that people derive hope, community, religious fervor in whatever sense that means to them. And I basically think the implementation deserves a lot more credit than it has in general been given. So Inception is getting pretty close to stable here. We have some more work to do, but most of our needs are now met and we can work on expanding and looking towards the future. We'll get back to that next time. Till then, thanks for watching. We're now in year two, and more of Dawn of Man will continue.